I recently purchased three Mac Pros for just five pounds total. They were sold to me as 40 and for parts only. So how about we go see how that went? So I've just been texting the uh, guy that is selling the Mac Pros and he's just given me his address and I am due to be there in about 20, 25 minutes. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes to plan because he has marked them as sold on Facebook. Uh, and I'm hoping that means to me, but he hasn't actually clarified that. So uh, fingers crossed when I get there, everything will be okay. But um, yeah, let's go pick up some five pound Mac Pros. Okay guys, so I have just picked up the Mac Pros and here they are. I've sort of hidden them underneath some blankets just to protect them during the journey. Um, they were a little bit more scratched up than I was hoping for, but for five pounds, you can't really complain. Um, I did have a quick look based on the um, sort of stickers on the outside. It would appear that this one here is a eight core early 2008 model. Then I've also got another one in the uh, side of my car, sort of down here, just sort of, this one's in quite rough shape, but uh, you know, hopefully, there's some stuff inside that still works. Uh, that's the four core version. But then, sort of going down underneath that top one isn't actually a uh, Mac Pro, it's a Power Mac G5. So, we actually have some decent stuff in here. The yeah, sure, the cases are a bit roughed up, but hopefully, I'll be able to polish lots of the marks out and get them cleaned up really nicely. So I went ahead and brought the Mac Pros inside and set them up in my recording studio, aka bedroom. And once I had them all inside, I gave them a quick little clean. It was nothing overly serious, just a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber cloth, just to sort of get rid of some of the easier dirt and marks that were on there. I'll potentially look into cleaning them up a little bit better in the future, but for now, this is good enough for me. Now, the first step was just to take off the side panels and see what was and wasn't there. And as it turned out, by the looks of things, the majority of the hardware was there. When I spoke to the guy when I was picking them up, he told me he had removed the hard drives for sort of data security purposes, and yet he had certainly done that. And he'd, unfortunately, he'd also taken the hard drive caddies as well, which was a bit of a pain. However, he had left me some of the hard drive caddies that weren't originally populated with hard drives, which made life a bit easier. And so once I'd put in my own hard drive, luckily one of my friends did have a OSX Snow Leopard install CD, which I was able to use. And so massive shout out to Joel, because without him and his install CD, this project would have been so much harder to get off the ground. So I have to admit, I'm not exactly what I'd call an Apple Pro. I'm in fact probably more of a noob when it comes to Apple hardware. And so I can't really tell the difference between a Mac Pro 2.1 and a Mac Pro 3.1. However, I do think we have one of each, I'm just not sure which way round it is. And so we're going to start off with the PC, which according to the serial number and the sticker on the back, has the better hardware installed. So we're going to go ahead, boot that up, see if we can get it running Snow Leopard, and go from there. So we all knew it wasn't going to be that easy, didn't we? Because it's a Mac and I don't have a Mac keyboard, I have no easy way of opening the CD drive. Now I did do a little bit of googling and found out if I hold down F12 on a Windows keyboard that should eject the CD drive. And if you listen carefully I can hear it trying to do that, however unfortunately it doesn't seem to be coming out. So we're going to have to do some troubleshooting and working out why the CD drive on this Mac isn't working because until we do that we're not getting any operating system installed on this. And so I've managed to get the uh, optical drive out along with over a decade's worth of dust but we do have it removed and so there's only one thing left to do and that's troubleshoot So I don't know if you guys already know this, but the majority of CD drives have a tiny little pin-sized hole, which if you unfold a paper clip, you can just about jam it in there. And if you do, you'll be able to eject the CD drive manually. And so once I was able to do this, I was able to get the CD drive fully working and without any issues. And wow, it turns out this drive is loud. I'm gonna go ahead and put my microphone right next to it, but you guys, cover your ears because this sounds like a tornado.
So yeah, it might be an incredibly loud CD drive, but once I've used the pin to open it and put the CD in, looks like we're gonna have a working install. And so with the installer ready to go, it was time to get macOS installed. Now it did take me a second there to realize that because it's macOS, I can't just chuck an old NTFS hard drive in it and expect it to format correctly first try. No, instead I had to open up disk utility and format the drive correctly before I could go ahead and get macOS installed on it. I don't know if you guys noticed there based on the partitions, however that drive that I just used to install macOS was actually the drive that I used in the Wish hard drive video, so if you haven't already checked that out make sure to go watch that video. However, I'll be honest with you guys, once the installer had actually started running and everything was partitioned correctly, we installed macOS with relatively few issues and after about half an hour of allowing it to tick through, we were in a working macOS operating system. And once we'd gotten past the incredibly cringy welcome video that macOS used to include, it was time to actually check for some updates, see how far of an operating system into the future we could get up to, and then also check out for sure what hardware is inside of this, because I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't really fancy taking it apart, I just wanted to check it in software. And so, as we could see, unfortunately, this was the Mac Pro 2.1. Granted it is the quad core and it does have two of those processors making it an 8 core, however unfortunately we aren't going to be able to go any further than OS X Lion. So whilst I did go ahead and install OS X Lion, unfortunately I was hoping for a more up to date operating system. And on that note, if you guys want to see me do some gaming benchmarks with this Mac, then do be sure to leave a comment down below, because I've got some pretty interesting upgrades in line for this Mac, including putting in this graphics card. But that does still leave us one good chance, because we have two more computers. Now, as we already know, one of them is a Power Mac G5, which obviously will not be running a more up-to-date operating system. However, if I am correct, the other is a Mac 3.1, and so that should be able to support up to El Capitan. So the next PC I wanted to take a look at was the Power Mac G5. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to go ahead and install Mac OS X on this because the Snow Leopard install DVD that I have is for version 10.6.3 and the Power Mac G5 only supports up to 10.5.6. Now, this is something I could potentially work around in the future if I get myself a slightly older install CD for Snow Leopard. However, for now, we're just going to go ahead and boot up without the hard drive to see if we have a more or less functioning computer. If it is something you guys would be interested in, then do be sure to let me know down below. However, taking off the side panel, there's some interesting things about this Power Mac G5. I'm going to give you guys a couple of seconds to see if you noticed the first one. Did you spot it? Yeah, there's a graphics card just sitting there completely loosely within the chassis. It's not plugged into anything and it's probably broken by now. Not to mention the amazing amounts of dust in this machine. It looks ridiculous. I mean, seriously, look at how thick that dust is. And so the question now becomes, do I really want to go to the hassle of testing this computer when it has the worst looking case out of all of them just because of the damage to it and the fact that you know it's going to be running an incredibly outdated operating system. Especially considering we're already aware that the computer does work considering we are able to post and we get an output to the display, you know, all that we haven't been able to do is install the operating system so I'm happy to call this a functional unit and move on to the next. I went to go ahead and install Snow Leopard on the Mac 3.1 and as it turned out, um, there's no graphics card in here and you know, I did just mention just a second ago, maybe if you were paying attention you'll remember, we did have a graphics card that we found lying about in the Mac Power Mac G5. And so, grabbing that out of the Power Mac G5 that was just lying about on top, I've taken the graphics card, put it into the Mac Pro 3.1 and it doesn't boot up. There's no booting. That graphics card is DOA. It is dead. <laughs> so what I think I'm going to do is take the GPU out of the Mac 2.1 and see if I can get that working in it. And whilst I'm doing it, maybe I'll nick the RAM as well. 
The only reason I want the RAM is because, well, the 3.1 seems to only have two gigs, whereas the 2.1 seems to have six gigs. And well, if we can get an eight gigabyte total, then perhaps this system will perform reasonably well. With the graphics card and the RAM swapped over, it would appear that in this entire lot, our only piece of dead hardware was that graphics card. That's insane. And so the next step was to go ahead and install OS X Snow Leopard. Now, because I'd had the previous experience working with the Mac 2.1, I reasonably knew what I was doing this time. So the process for that was fairly simple. And once we were up and running, we seemed to have a fully functional operating system and everything was working fine. It was at this point I was able to check that we were indeed running a Mac Pro 3.1, which meant our most up-to-date operating system that we could officially support was Mac OS El Capitan. Now, unfortunately, as many of you probably are aware, this is no longer available on the Apple App Store. And so I had to download the file separately online and download it to install it manually. Now, luckily, this wasn't too difficult of a process. However, it was a little bit trickier than just running it off of the App Store. Nevertheless, we did get it installed and Mac OS El Capitan is officially running completely fine on the Mac Pro 3.1. And so that leaves us with three fully functional Mac Pros and, well, no, that's a lie. That leaves us with two fully functional Mac Pros and one fully functional Mac G5, not including the hard drives. I did have to put those in myself. However, this, people, is quite possibly the bargain of the century and something that I will never, ever, ever be able to do again. And so, with El Capitan fully functional and installed on the final PC, how about we summarise? We got one Power Mac G5, one Mac Pro 2.1, and one Mac Pro 3.1. And that is a killer deal for five pounds. Now we have to ask ourselves, why exactly were they so cheap? Well, the guy that was selling them sold them to me as parts and not working. My best guess for why he was doing that was that, well, he genuinely believed that they weren't working. When he sold them to me, he told me he had taken out the hard drives for security purposes. Now, that means obviously we're not gonna have an operating system installed. So I don't know what the state of the operating system was like before he tried to sell them. Now, my best guess is that the operating systems on all three of these machines had slowly corrupted over the years of use and he just never, he was never tech savvy enough or he never looked into getting them repaired and so sold them for parts. And therefore, I happened to stumble across the deal of the century just because this guy didn't want to get his computers repaired. To give you guys an idea of how much these computers are worth, I received eight gigabytes of RAM in total. Two gigabytes of these RAM sticks sell for about 10 pounds in total. So I'm doing the maths on the fly here, but that means if we have a total of four sets of two sticks and each set of two sticks can sell for 10 pounds, then that means that we have 40 pounds worth of sellable items just in RAM sticks alone. Now that's a massive return on investment and one that eventually I'll probably make because, well, whilst I'm not planning on selling these PCs straight away, I do intend on selling the Mac Pros at some point because, well, let's face it, there's only so many videos I can make with them and I can only be so interested in some Mac Pros from 2008. But guys, if you did enjoy that video, then please be sure to hit like and subscribe and leave in the comment section down below any thoughts or feelings if they're more complicated than just you like it. Now, I do also have a Discord server that I recently set up. In fact, you can see it on the screen behind me. So be sure to go join that if you have any video suggestions because I'd love to do some more content with this Mac Pro. And as I mentioned earlier, I do have some things planned already. But if you've got any ideas further to that, then do be sure to join the Discord and leave it in the video suggestions channel.